Hi, my name is Matt Gross, and on July 1st, I took over as superintendent of Independent School District Number 318, Grand Rapids and Big Fork. While new to Grand Rapids, I've been in the area for about 16 years, working as an administrator in neighboring school districts, and so I've been very familiar with Grand Rapids and the district and um, the, the communities surrounding it, like Big Fork and Cohasset and all the other communities that we serve. My wife and I just recently moved to the school district as well, so not only uh, do I work for the school district, but I'm a resident, which I think uh, is an important thing for me as a superintendent to be able to do because it gives me unique perspectives. It has been an interesting time for a transition, but the people that I've been working with have been amazing in helping that transition go really, really well, and I'm really grateful for that. They've made me feel really at home. There has been a lot going on in the school district, just even in the short time that I've been on board, and I just wanted to give you a, a few updates on those things. First, there have been many changes in the school district staffing-wise. We have a number of principals that are new or in new positions uh, in just about every building in our school district, and so that's exciting, and we've had some new staff hired in the district and business offices and classrooms and support staff, and so we're real eager to get to know our, our new staff and uh, see what they can do for the children of the district. Second, East and West Rapids Elementary are under construction as new school buildings in the district, and they are uh, scheduled to open for students on September 8th. We actually have cleaning crews in those buildings now, beginning that cleaning process so that we can take occupancy, begin moving in materials, and uh, so we can get the teachers in there and get things set up for the school. So we're really excited about that, and there'll be some opportunities uh, this uh, August yet for people to get a sneak peek at those buildings but obviously with the uh, the virus and the implications of that we're going to be controlling access to those buildings just so that people will be able to see those but also do that in a way that's as safe as possible. Cohasset Elementary is also under construction and it was slated for an addition and a renovation and those summer renovations are always very difficult with school districts and timing and uh, getting everything crammed into a short window so that's going to be right up to the wire but we're being assured that that building will be ready for students on September 8th and so we're hoping to be able to do some of that sneak peek and some touring of that uh, again with limited and controlled group sizes in as we get closer to the school year. We also completed a turf project at Noble Hall Field recently, and if you haven't had the chance to drive by, you should. It's really beautiful, and that field is going to enable us to not only increase the number of events that we're able to hold on the field and, and uh, have our student-athletes participate on that field in, in many more um, ways, um, things like our marching band I saw out there today practicing in small groups but uh, and that'll save wear and tear on that field and it will also save on our need to water and uh, mow and things like that. Uh, it's also going to enable us to host regional playoff events which is going to be a good economic impact for our communities and so uh, we're looking forward to that and when we can start to host those. Finally the topic that is on everyone's mind right now I think is the start of school and we will be releasing our plan to parents on Friday, August 9th, and mo Monday, August 10th. That plan will be a high-level view of what our return to school will look like on September 8th. And so it will go into to some of the details around the uh, logistics and the day-to-day uh, -day operations of our school district, uh, what classrooms will look like, and what we'll do be doing for cleaning and disinfecting and busing, those types of things. There are a lot of details that we're still working through as we learn more and get more guidance, but uh, it will be an opportunity for our parents and community to see what we're thinking uh, for September 8th. Last Thursday, the governor of Minnesota, Tim Waltz, issued a plan that enabled local school districts to gauge and make decisions around the start of school based on local county data and we were grateful to see that along with metrics to use to guide those decisions. And our commitment as a school district is to use that data as a starting point as we consider how schools should open and how we should run. At this point, our county data indicate that we are able to open in person for all children grades K through 12. So that is what we plan to do on September 8th. 
With that said, it's really important to know that our county data, like it has from the beginning, will fluctuate and that county data will determine our ability to remain in person. And so I, as a superintendent, as a parent, I just encourage you as a community member, as a parent, to do what you can to uh, keep our communities safe, to keep our county numbers down, and that's going to have a direct impact on our ability as a school district to serve children in, in person. We really feel that that interaction between caring adults at school and children in school is a crucial part to the education process. And we believe that that's where learning happens best. We also know that it's really important that as a school district, we are being smart and careful about uh, ensuring that safety remains a priority. And so keeping those things in mind. There are some really important things to know and understand about an in-person learning model. And the first nuance and important thing to know is that in-person does not mean uh, back to school as normal. Our schedules will look different. How children move in schools will be different. Uh, lunches will be different. And uh, the busing will be different. All those things, will, there'll be adjustments to all those areas again, to make sure that we're mitigating all the risks we can to have that school experience be productive, be as normal as it can, but also be as safe as it can. Second thing to understand and know about back to school is that masks are a requirement. And just like in businesses, the mask order affects schools. And so all children and staff in schools will be required to wear a face covering. There are some excep exceptions uh, for medical conditions and uh, behavioral and uh, cognitive concerns, but for the most part, masks will be a requirement. And we're used to in schools responding to requirements like this, although this one's going to be a challenge, we know. We also know that um, students will respond to how we set the tone as adults. So if we are communicating to our children that this is about going back to school, and that's an important part of going back to school, our children will fall in line with that. They seem to be adapting to wearing masks maybe easier than we as parents do. I've seen that already with some programming that we've been running during the summer where children are coming in, signing in, and putting their masks on without issues. So they can do it and they will do it if we just establish those expectations. We know that there will be some children that struggle and uh, with wearing masks and choose not to wear those masks. And uh, the thing I would say about that is that in schools, we've been dealing with compliance issues for a long, long time, whether that was about getting to class on time, whether that was about uh, staying in your seat or wearing an appropriate T-shirt. Our schools, our administrators, our teachers, and our support staff have been dealing with uh, student compliance issues for a long, long time. That's just a part of having school. And so we're going to treat mask wearing just like we would one of those compliance issues or a, or a um, school dress code issue where our first, our first choice, our first position would be to sit down or to talk to that child, make sure they understand the purpose, the why they need to wear that mask. And if we still struggle with compliance, we'll take the next step like we always do, which is to loop a parent into that conversation so that there's understanding about how important that mask wearing is. The important thing to know too for parents is that uh, in the school district and school districts around ISD 318, uh, parents will have a choice about sending their kids to school or not. And so next week, uh, there'll be a uh, survey or a questionnaire or a sign up really, a registration if you will, uh, for parents to fill out, one for each child. And in that, parents will be describing for us whether they are choosing an in-person model or uh, a stay-at-home model for their child's education. And so I've already described the in-person model or talked to that, but uh, if, you, if a parent chooses to keep their child at home, it's really important and it seems like there may be some confusion out there. If a parent chooses to keep their child at home, Independent School District number 318 will educate your child at home through our program we're calling uh, 318 Connect Ed. And so you'll be able to receive remote education or distance learning for your child from a 318 licensed teacher with all the supports that come with being connected to our school district. Things like school counseling, school, things like mental health and resource officers, um, 
administration that can help problem solve, and again, the teachers that are local to our community, that know our children, that know our families. And so if you're a parent who is feeling uncomfortable about sending your child to school, you don't need to find a new option for them. 318 can still be your option. Uh, and we know that distance learning was a challenge in the spring for many parents. It was certainly a challenge for all of us, I think. But I just want you to know that our school districts, our teachers, our support staff all over Minnesota learned from that experience and are committed to uh, improving that experience for your children in the fall. So we're prepared to do that. Part of that has to do with training. Part of it has to do, again, with what we learned from the data that we got back from many of you. So we're prepared and ready to meet the needs of those children, those students at home or, with, or in person, whichever one uh, a parent chooses. There are some uh, important things to know about choosing those, making those choices. If you are a parent of a high school student and um, you choose to enroll your high school student in a online learning provider that's not connected to a, our school district uh, or the, your local school district, there are some implications for athletic or activity uh, eligibility there. So it's really important, I think, that if you are a parent and considering those options that you just reach out to your building principal and have a discussion so that um, you're making the best choice you can for your child and taking all the information into account uh, as you're making that really important decision for your kid. Like I said, while we want the in-person experience to be as close to normal as possible, we know that it won't be. Um, we're taking it very seriously and respect the fact that uh, our community wants our children to be as safe as, as they can be in our buildings. Uh, we know there'll be some changes to uh, some modifications, but I also want you to know that our curriculum, what we're going to be teaching, uh, is going to be as close to the same as it can be. So your students' previous experience in math and science and reading and phi ed, those types of things will continue. We may have to make some modifications about where those classes meet or how many students are in those classes, um, but we're prepared to continue with that curriculum that you're used to uh, with the modifications we need to in order to keep uh, kids and staff as safe as we can. We appreciate our communities patience, our parents' understanding as we've worked through this. It's certainly been difficult for our community and, and uh, communities across our state. And I just want to ask for your continued support and patience as we move through this together. We really want to be partners with our parents in this. It's going to be a key thing that we keep communication lines open, that we uh, support each other so that we can have the best experience for our kids and that we can create some continuity there for our students. There is a possibility if case numbers increase in our area that our school district will have to shift to a different model of education. The next model sort of in restriction is the hybrid model where some students will attend every day and some students may not. At our middle and high school where we have more space restrictions um, and more space confinements, uh, we'll be moving to an alternating day schedule there if we end up in a hybrid mode. And uh, if we're in elementary, we'll, um, we'll, when we move to a hybrid mode, we'll really be looking at our space constraints, make sure that we're doing that distancing, and um, making sure that we're meeting the guidelines and the requirements that we need to make. With that, I just appreciate the chance to have a conversation uh, with our community. If there are questions, you can certainly reach out. We have, uh, we have an email address set up just for uh, COVID questions, COVID planning at isd318.org. You can check our website at isd318.org and go to the COVID-19 page where you'll find our updated plan and other information about COVID response. Um, you can also call me in the superintendent's office at 327-5704. I just encourage you to reach, continue to reach out with questions. We've had great feedback and questions from our community and parents about what's happening. We're trying to get information out as quickly as we can, but also not too quickly that we have to backtrack and, and uh, rephrase and, and re-message. So continue to ask those questions. I have been ho hosting a Facebook Live event on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock. We've had a good turnout for that. Again, an opportunity to share information, answer questions there, and uh, you can answer questions the day of or beforehand, and we'll do our best to answer those for you. Thank you for your support of our schools and support of our children, support of our teachers and our staff, and we look forward to seeing you this fall. Bye.